Welcome back to my knitwear channel. Uh, today I'm sharing with you a technique that you can use to add this professional final touch to your knitwear pieces. I usually use this technique in two cases, to trim the neckline, which I'm going to show you today, or to pick up the stitches for the sleeve if I work the sleeve from the top down. This neckline trimming technique adds extra step to the whole process right before you start picking up the stitches for the neckline as usual and it might seem as an extra work but believe me at the end of the day it is so worth it it completely changes the look of the neckline line and uh, hides all the imperfections i always say as long as you spend all this time working on your knitwear piece you might as well spend a few extra minutes adding these final touches that will kind of seal the package and create the knitwear that you will enjoy to wear for years to come. So let's get to the tutorial. To trim the neckline, you would need a crochet hook, the main yarn that you worked your project in, the working needle, and optional a contrasting color yarn. I use it for the demonstration purposes, but it can also be used for design purposes. This is usually how your neckline looks like before the trimming. This is the front. You can see all the decreased stitches and bound off stitches. The line created is always slightly uneven with gaps and ridges. Transition between the shoulder seam and the back is also pretty visible. In general, it has this unfinished look to it. Traditionally, the instructions for trimming the neckline would read something like that. With the working needle, pick up and knit X number of stitches around the neckline edge. The problem with this method is that in my experience, it never hides all the imperfections around the edge and there is always slight unevenness to it. So before I get to picking up the stitches, I always add one more extra step. I use the crochet hook to create a stitch chain running around the edge of the neckline, the back, front and the shoulder seam. I'm using the contrasting yarn for the demonstration purposes, holding two threads together for the extra thickness. I always start with inserting the crochet hook into the edge of a shoulder seam, just like that. Then I will pull the contrasting yarn through creating the first loop on the hook. Now we are going to close this gap right between the shoulder seam and the bound of back stitches. We are going to insert the hook right under this uh, edge stitch. Here it is. So we are going to pull through the yarn, creating the second loop on the hook. And now we are going to pull this loop created through the first one on your hook. Just like that. And now we are going to create the stitch chain. This V shape here is the first stitch chain created. We will continue closing the gap between the shoulder seam and the bound of stitches. So we are going to continue closing the gaps, insert the hook under the edge stitch, pull the yarn through and pull this loop created through the first loop on your crochet hook. And you are creating this stitch chain running around the edge. Now we are coming to the bound of stitches and we are going to insert the hook into the stitch right under the bound of edge, just like that. Insert the hook, pull the yarn through and pull the loop created through the first loop on your crochet hook. So you can see that the stitch chain is being formed now again, um, insert the hook, you see this bound of edge, so we are going to insert the hook 
right inside of that v-shape stitch that is beneath it right under it so insert the hook in the middle again pull the yarn through just like that and pull the loop created through the first one on your crochet hook you will continue working in this manner until you created the chain around all uh, bound of stitches on the back so this is how your work looks like at this point we created this stitch chain running along the edge so this is the last bound of stitch here on the back we will close it uh, as well with this stitch chain created by the crochet hook and now we are going to get to the opposite shoulder seam and insert the hook inside of it right under the edge stitch just like that pull the yarn through and close close it with the uh, stitch chain just like that creating this stitch chain and we are slowly coming to the front closing the gap between the shoulder seam and the front neckline so this slope was created by decreasing the stitches for the front neckline to have it uh, a little bit more open than the back so we are going to close this slope right now with the stitch chain as well to create an even and nice looking edge insert the hook into the under the edge and create this stitch chain and continue in this manner until the bound of stitches insert the hook under the decreased stitch pull the yarn through and close it to create the stitch chain we are going to close this gap between this slope and the bound of stitches insert the hook right into the first bound of stitch pull the yarn through and close the stitch chain and we are going to continue in this manner inserting the hook inside of the stitches that are right below the bound of edge those v-shaped stitches insert the hook pull the yarn through and close the stitch chain just like that so those v-shaped stitches right under the edge and you are going to continue working in this manner all the way to the end to the last stitch so we are coming to the last stitch of the neckline edge closing the stitch chain here is the stitch insert the hook right under the edge pull the yarn through and close it and we are done with this part we finished creating the stitch chain around the neckline edge now we need to close the chain created insert the hook into the first stitch of the chain pull the working yarn through and cut off the contrasting yarn we don't need it anymore um, we can also switch to the working needle and insert the needle into the loop created and now we are going to start picking up the stitches from the chain that runs around the neckline insert the needle into the chain stitch inside of it and pick up an, and knit the required number of stitches just like that this is how your work looks like at this point um, continue to pick up and knit stitches inserting the needle inside of each chain stitch created and keep working in this manner around the neckline edge until you come to the beginning of the round this is how your work looks like at this point this is the last stitch of the round pick up and knit 
uh, one more stitch and we are done with this part all uh, stitches are picked up so next step is to create the actual neck band uh, I'm going to use the magic loop method don't forget to place the beginning of the round marker uh, to help you to keep track of the rounds and as for me I'm going to use one by one ribbon purl one knit one working around the neckline edge you can work in any given stitch pattern so one more tip uh, when you pick up and knit the stitches make sure that the number of stitches that you pick up works for the stitch pattern that you chose for your neck band so uh, I chose one by one ribbon so my number has to be even and divisible by two so at this point I'm just going to continue working in one by one ribbon uh, until the desired height of the neck band. You can play with the number, uh, usually one inch, one and a half inch is enough for me. So this is how the neck band will look like after you are done. Next step is to bind off the stitches. There are various ways how you can bind off the neckline edge stitches and each of them has their own function. In this example, I'm just going to use a simple binding off in, path, in pattern method. Um, knit one, purl one, pass the first work stitch over the second one and continue in this manner uh, around the neckline until the end. We are coming to the end of the round. We are going to bind off the last stitch and let's connect it to the beginning of the round to create a smooth transition. So insert the needle under the first bound of stitch of the round, pull through the yarn and I prefer to use crochet hook. So now I'm just going to pull the loop created through the last bound of stitch of the round to kind of close the circle, close the round. And now all we have to do is cut off the working yarn, just like that. So this is how your neckline looks like at this point. You can see this contrasting crochet chain running along the edge, concealing all the uneven edges. So let's flip it to the wrong side. This is how your work looks like here. And I also wanted to show you uh, how I hide the loose ends uh, from the neckline. So I start with threading the yarn through the needle and then I will run the yarn along the stitch column on the wrong side all the way to the ridge that was created by the neckline edge trimming. This ridge here. So pull the yarn all the way through make sure to adjust the neckline edge that it's not pulled too hard and that it looks even and now we are go going to thread the uh, loose end along this ridge as far as you can go then we can cut uh, the end as close to the ridge as possible um, so it is secure inside of the ridge and nothing is sticking out and we are done you can see how the neckline is perfectly even all the gaps and all the ridges are concealed the neckline looks professionally finished i hope you found this tutorial helpful please subscribe to my channel and i'm going to see you next week with the new knitwear design